Charlie. Today we will see the next topic, uh, which is actually a different uh, systems of IC engine in that uh, we will see today. Okay, so there are different systems like fuel supply system, cooling system, lubrication system, and then air cleaner. Actually, uh, uh, we have covered uh, lubrication system and uh, fuel supply system in the last uh, week or before that we will see today the cooling system and air cleaner today so the cooling system uh, which controls actually the temperature of the engine uh, that system is we say it is a cooling system which actually controls the temperature of the engine so why cooling is necessary so still some students are joining so we will wait for a while because some students are in the queue. Okay, I think it is 2 p.m. now, so we'll go back into the presentation. Okay, just wait, wait, wait for that. Okay, we'll see today the cooling system. Uh, why uh, cooling is necessary? The temperature of the burning gases in the cylinder uh, when reaches up to 1500 to 2000 degrees Celsius, which results in expansion, means uh, that particular part uh, may get expanded. Like uh, uh, cylinder is actually cylinder where actual power stroke is completed and the combustion takes place uh, in the combustion chamber or the cylinder. There may be wear and tear of the cylinder due to very high temperature, the film of lubricating oil will get oxidized uh, lubrication uh, means what is the purpose of uh, lubrication its uh, density will be decreased because of high temperature so this will result in uh, piston uh, deterioration also large uh, temperature difference may result in uh, deterioration of engine components also high temperatures also lowers the volumetric efficiency of the engine we have actually already seen what is the volumetric efficiency of the engine the E is missing here. The spelling of engine is actually. So uh, we may edit that uh, just. Just wait. I hope. Uh... Okay. So the students are already joined. So we'll go into the cooling system so <clears throat> when the temperature of the engine uh, is very high it will not work properly and there is wear and tear losses so the, that's why there is a necessity of the cooling system for satisfactory performance of engine it should neither be overheated nor uh, overcooled also so experience have shown that the petrol engine operates best at 180 degree fahrenheit Kerosene engine uh, works about at uh, 200 uh, degree Fahrenheit and diesel engine works uh, very well at uh, 140 degree Fahrenheit to 165 degree Fahrenheit. So these are the temperatures at which that particular engine works properly. This is uh, the study of cooling systems. Then there are uh, different methods of uh, cooling system, air cooling and water cooling. Nowadays, air cooling is not used. Still, we will see. See, this is actually the combustion chamber or your cylinder. And uh, the fins are uh, there. So, cooling fins are uh, there between the walls and uh, they are surrounding the cylinder. So, so, what is the purpose of these fins actually? The fins are provided so that the surface area uh, may be increased and surface area is increased so that it uh, it will uh, cool faster that's why the fins are provided uh, to actually increase the surface area so air cooled engines are those engines in which it is conducted from the working components of the engine to the atmosphere directly 
in such engine cylinder generally not grouped in single block means uh, uh, if there it is a four cylinder engines uh, they are not blocked in single block the four cylinders means one two three four the cylinders are actually uh, they are uh, separated from each other so that uh, they will not uh, means uh, the heat will not dissipate from one cylinder to the another so nowadays the air cooling system is not used water cooling system is used but uh, the fins are provided uh, surrounding this combustion chamber so that the surface area might be increased then advantages of uh, air cooled engines uh, it is simple in design and constructions water jackets uh like radiators water pump thermostat pipes uh, uh, hoses actually not houses hoses hoses are actually the black pipes uh that may be not uh, needed in air cooled engines it makes engine more compact and it is comparatively lighter in weight so what are the disadvantages uh, there are some certain disadvantages there is uneven cooling of the engine parts engine temperature is generally high during uh, working period so nowadays water cooling water cooled engines are used it, uh, it is better uh, because engine using water cooling as a cooling a medium there maybe water is used or some coolants may be used is called water cooled engines the liquid is circulated around the cylinder to absorb heat from the cylinder walls in general water is used as a cooling liquid the heated water is circulated through a radiator which helps in cooling the water there are common methods of water cooling like uh, open jacket or hopper method nowadays open jacket or hopper method is not used uh, it may be it was used for a single cylinder engine then there is a thermo siphon uh, method nowadays and force circulation methods are nowadays mostly used in water cooled engines so we'll see one by one the, uh, this is the op open jacket or hopper hopper method say so this is uh, the figure of cylinder it is a crankcase this is the cylinder this is a piston connecting rod and uh there are some water jackets are surrounding this uh, combustion chamber then uh, there is hopper is there the water is provided at the hopper there is a drain plug is there when uh, actually this water gets heated in open open jacket system or hopper system uh, there a, dr a drain plug is open and this hot hot water gets drained from uh, this bottom and uh, we have to replace this hot water by the uh, cold water so it is hectic process means we have to stop the vehicle and remove this uh, hot water and again you have to put the cold water so this nowadays this method is uh, not used there is a hopper or a jacket containing water which surrounds the engine cylinder engine absorbs satisfactorily as long as the hopper contains water when water starts boiling the hot water is replaced by the cold water this uh, 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 is not there but it is actually replaced r e p l a c t by cold water and the drain drain plug is provided here to drain off that uh, hot water now there is this method uh, as actually it has a disadvantage that's why it is not used open jacket or the hopper method so there is a thermo siphon method we will see it's um, actually we have this model in laboratory but i am unable to show that oh, okay so i will show you the video of this uh, thermo siphon method it consists of radiator water jacket fan temperature gauge and hose connections hose connections there are some uh, pipes are provided to circulate the water the system is based on the principle that heated water which surrounds the cylinder becomes lighter in weight and it rises uh, thermo siphon is a, which is also known as a natural circulation method okay this is thermo siphon is actually natural circulation method uh we know that uh, when the water gets heated actually it has uh, less density and uh, the level of the hot water means it rises actually it, uh, it rises upward in a liquid column and whatever with the cold water is actually its density is more and it uh, it will remain at the uh, bottom hot water goes to the radiator i will show its working and the figure also i just see this description the hot water goes to the radiator where it passes through the tube surrounded by maybe most of the students uh, seen uh, this uh, radiator is a very important uh, component in the cooling system so there are some um, uh, tubes are provided and through that tubes the uh, hot water gets circulated and in front of that tube uh, uh, there is some uh, fan is provided that fan actually sucks the air and that air actually um, uh, cools down this uh, uh, water which actually passes through the tubes uh, which are surrounded by the air 
circulation of water takes place due to the reason that the outer jacket and the radiator are connected to both sides at the top and at the bottom so a fan is driven with the help of v uh, belt or air sub through tubes of the radiator unit and then it cools down just which some students are just waiting so okay just wait okay so we'll see its figure and the video also thermo siphon uh, uh, method of uh, actual cooling system so the disadvantage of of this system is that circulation of water is greatly reduced by accumulation of scale or foreign matter in the passage and consequently uh, overheating may be there overheating of the engine may, uh, may be there if there is accumulation of the some foreign matter uh, in this circulation so we'll see uh there is also this is uh, the third method is the forced uh, circulation method uh, see this is the in we, if you see the figure uh, properly uh, this component is actually the radiator and uh, the air is sucked the, the fan is there uh, because of the rotation of this fan air is sucked and this air is actually cools down whatever may be the hot water is circulating through this uh, radiator okay so uh, forced circulation system it is not it is not a natural circulation system some uh, pump uh, is uh, water pump is also provided to circulate the water in this method water pump is used to feed water from the radiator to the open jacket of the engine so when uh, that uh, <coughs> from uh, this uh, radiator the water gets uh, cooled actually that water is uh, this lifted by this water pump and that water pump actually circulates this hot to the open jacket of the engine after circulation the entire run of the water jacket water comes back to the radiator where it loses its sheets by the process of uh, radiations because of this air uh, or the radiation the hot water gets uh, cooled actually uh, to maintain the correct uh, engine temperature thermostat oil is placed so if you see this figure properly the thermostat wall is uh, there it uh, it actually will control or it will measure uh, the correct uh, temperature uh, of the outer end of the cylinder head uh, cooling liquid is by passed through the water jacket of the engine until engine attains uh, the desired temperature then thermostat wall opens and is uh, and then uh, bypass is closed allowing the water go to the radiator like this okay so from this side actually see this actually the hot water hot water gets uh, so so from the bottom actually see, see from the bottom this cool water actually circulated uh, around this uh, four cylinder so it is four cylinder engine so it is circulated uh, through this cylinder when it becomes hot when, when it becomes hot and uh, with the help of this uh, maybe the water pump is there and this hot water actually again circulated through these tubes of this radiator and because of the circulation and because of the flow of uh, this air uh, flow of this uh, air uh, uh, it becomes uh, cold and again from the bottom uh, the, that cold water is circulated uh, this uh, actually to the jacket which is surrounding water jacket which is surrounding to the cylinders and when it becomes uh, hot again Uh, this hot water is supplied to uh, from the top of the uh, radiator to the radiator and uh, it is circulated to the tubes and becomes hot so uh, the um, okay this system consists of water pump radiator fan fan belt water uh, jacket uh, thermostat all temperature gauge and uh, also hose pipe hose pipe there is hose pipe okay if you see this connection there are hose pipe i will show you the video of forced circulation system also uh, later on we will see the components of water pump then there is uh, uh, radiator and etc uh, first of all we will see some video of uh, this just waiting for that so we will go into the videos we will see some
first of all uh, see the component it is four cylinder engine say this is your uh, uh, carburetor okay say this is the bottom part this is at the top of the system so we can see uh, the water cooling system the video of the water cooling system So it is, uh, there, there will be the four piston and all that. Uh, these, these are the uh, normal components or the four uh, cylinder engines. So how it become, uh, how it works actually, the cooling system, how it works. This is the working video of that. Cooling sub, uh, system. So this is the crankshaft. Uh, there are alls, okay. There are uh, inlet and exhaust alls. So uh, you can see in the figure that there are eight alls okay one is uh, means uh, two alls for each cylinder one is inlet all and another one is the exhaust all okay so this is the uh, piston this is the connecting rod these are the cylinders okay four cylinders this is your crankshaft okay this is the flywheel and uh, see uh, this is the carburetor and the fan is provided in front of uh, this carburetor when uh, it rotates actually it sucks or it draws uh, uh, the cool air, cold air, and hot air, water is circulating through this uh, carburetor, which uh, gets cool. Okay, this is the axial fan. That uh, that fan is connected to the crankshaft, and to there. There is a lift pump is provided here. See if you see the proper figure, uh, this uh, structure. See this is this is the crankshaft, and uh, this is uh, this uh, pump, and uh, it is connected by this belt. Okay, by this belt, this fan is connected to the crankshaft, and this pump. So this is water uh, water jacket pump. How it works actually? See this uh, figure. This is actually uh, okay thermostat wall. Okay, which is also very important uh, component. This is the thermostat wall. This is the radiator. Radiator is also called as a heat exchanger. This is the expansion uh, tank is provided at the top of the uh, what you can say radiator. A radiator cap is there. Okay, this is the radiator cap. How it works actually? We'll see. Uh, actually, uh, when uh, the engine starts so how it how it works and so actually the animation shows that when uh, it is showing uh, these blue lines actually it shows that it, uh, this water is cool actually okay initially this water is uh, cold cold cool or the initially actually these lines are blue. The water is cold. And when it is showing, the water is circulated. So this is the water jacket system means water jackets are provided uh, actually surrounding this uh, cylinder if you see these four cylinders the water jackets are provided which actually surrounds this uh, cylinders each cylinder and through this water jackets uh, this cool water is circulated and when it becomes hot then again it is uh, supplied to the uh, car uh, this your uh, radiator
this is actually the cooling uh, water pump actually this is the uh, this is actually um, this this cooling water pump actually sucks the uh, cold water okay that is the function of this uh, that pump there is thermostat is there so this cool cold water uh, is actually cold water comes from this side this cold water so what is the function of this uh, thermostat all actually uh, when uh, engine is uh, not working or it is cool, cool actually uh, this thermostat all actually gets open or it uh, moves up and whatever may be the cool water is there that is actually again uh, comes from this line okay from this line so this uh, cool water it is not necessary to circulate the cold water into the radiator so when this thermostat all moves up this uh, cold water is bypassed again okay bypassed actually it, uh, it doesn't uh, enter into the carburetor from this uh, side from this uh, actually this bottom side it will move through this pipe so when the engine uh, starts operating uh, actually this uh, red line uh, now uh, the water gets heated actually okay so because uh, this red line show, shows that the water gets heated and uh, now this water will not get bypassed like this means this water will be circulated or it will be flow into the carburetor tubes of the carburetor so this red water will not uh, flow uh, from this bottom side okay it will not flow from this bottom side this thermostat wall uh, does not allow uh, the water uh, to bypass through this uh, pipe again actually thermostat wall uh, means when this uh, water gets circulated through this uh, whatever may the water jackets are provided uh, surrounding this uh, uh, cylinder this hot water uh, goes into the Uh, tubes of the carburetor okay and this uh, uh, axial fan uh, actually sucks the cold water and that cold water cools down the uh, that uh, whatever may be the uh, the temperature of this uh, hot water gets reduced and then it uh, from this bottom see uh, it gets collected at the bottom of this radiator and uh, from this uh, pipe at the bottom okay that uh, cold water again is circulated into the uh, water jackets which are surrounding the four cylinders and when it becomes uh, hot again that um, water again goes into this uh, radiator
so this is all about this waiting You just wait. Okay, so we have seen the video uh, of uh, cooling system also now we'll see we'll solve some uh, examples before that we'll complete uh, some part which was left actually the radiator water pump and all that so water pump is a uh, centrifugal type of the pump it has casing and impeller mounted on a shaft the casing is usually made up of a cast iron the pump shaft is made up of some uh, non corrosive material and at the end of the shaft a small pulley is fitted with uh, v belt actually we have already seen this in the uh, video a water pump is mounted at the end of the cylinder block between the block and the radiator when the impeller rotates the water between the impeller blades is thrown outward by centrifugal force and the water goes to the cylinder under pressure the pump outlet is connected to the hose pipe uh, to the bottom of the radiator the impeller shaft is supported on one or more uh, bearings this seal is which prevents actually the leakage of the water so there is also one uh, component which is radiator one of the important component or most important component in cooling uh, cooling system it holds a large volume of water uh, in close contact with a large volume of air so that uh, it is transferred from the water into the air easily so see there are some water tubes are there this is thin uh, metal plates uh, bottom tank uh, this is the header tank inlet uh, from the cyl uh, cylinder uh, block hot water flows into the radiator at the top and cold water flows uh, from the bottom so hot water uh, there is a radiator cap is also provided hot water enters from the top and the cold water is given out or flows out from the bottom tubes or passages carry the water from the top of the radiator to the bottom passing it over a large metal surface air flows between the tubes or through the seals at right angles to the downward uh, flowing water this helps in transferring the heat from water to the temperature and radiator may be two up two types uh, tubular type of the or the cellular type then uh, there is also air cleaning system of uh, internal combustion engine ic engine uh, need of air cleaning uh, system tractor is a vehicle which is mainly used in the field and mostly under uh, dusty conditions therefore air supplied to the tractor engine must be kept free from abrasive uh, materials or it should be free from uh, some uh, dust dust particles Un unfiltered air uh, contains millions of abrasive uh, dust particles and dust entering a tractor engine is often the main uh, cause of wear the dirt collected on the air uh, uh, cleaner increases the resistance to the air flow so because of that what happens uh the dirtier air cleaner causes lesser air flow uh flow to the engine and thus the engine uh, performance is affected volumetric efficiency will be affected because of this uh, if the air cleaner is not working volumetric efficiency will be affected a partial clogged air cleaner is common uh, cause of a diesel engine uh, smoking rapid air of the sleeves piston and piston rings all all guides and wears it indicates ineffective air cleaning the operating efficiency good performance and durability of an engine mainly depend on the 
air cleaner so it is also important uh, part of the engine hence it is necessary to filter air to remove dirt and abrasive materials before admitting it to the engine then uh, uh, types of air cleaner it is dry type oil bath type oil soaked uh, element type uh, these are some types of the air cleaners then the dry uh, type of the air cleaner uh, this types of air cleaner contains three main parts like uh, pre cleaner main housing cleaning element etc uh, these are sealed into one unit the main housing uh, having uh, cleaning element we will see the figure in the next uh, ppt usually multi wire uh, netting is uh, provided in dry type of air cleaner but some are made of of a nylon hair or the paper air from atmosphere enters into the pre cleaner and passes through the cleaning element and goes to the inlet manifold Uh, the paper uh, type of filter element is cleaned after uh, 50 to 100 hours of the service then the advantages of the dry type of air cleaner easy to service good performance ingredient and rough fills more efficient at high speed uh, straw and chaff cause less restriction to air passage disadvantages of uh, this type of the air cleaner it is costlier to maintain than the oil bath because the filter element require replacement very often sometimes uh, dust particles enter into the cylinder then this is the figure of oil bath uh, type of the cleaner the main difference in the dry type and oil bath air cleaner is that in oil bath oil is used for uh, as the cleaning agent the oil bath uh, cleaner is the most common type of the air cleaner used on farm tractors dusty air is allowed to pass through and oil bath a mixture of oil spray and air are carried upward the oil is uh, entrapped by the filtering element and drops back while the clean air goes to the uh, engine or the carburetor all the fine dust particles which are carried by the air will be washed from the filtering element as an oil drains back at the top so if you see this uh, figure then you can see this is the uh, pre cleaner then this is the air uh, air inlet and when it enters into this um, oil bath type of the cleaner Uh, cleaner this is the main element then this is the air tube and this is the oil cup and uh, that uh, whatever may be the impurities are absorbed by this uh, oil uh, bath type of the cleaner and then whatever may be the clean air uh, then uh, which is supplied to the engine or the carburetor then uh, these are also some figure of oil bath uh, cleaner so due to the constant uh, that uh, we have seen this the first one we have seen dry type of the cleaner then there is a oil bath type of the cleaner and then due to uh, constant use the oil in the cup becomes thicker uh, its density will be uh, increased the thicker and must replaced by uh, fresh oil after 10 hours of the work under normal dusty condition on jobs where there is a little or no dust the oil should only be changed whenever dirt has collected up to date 3 to 6 mm in the bottom of this oil cup at least once in the year often in the dusty conditions the entire air uh, cleaning system should be thoroughly washed while uh, refilling the oil cup uh, care should be taken that the proper oil level is maintained in the cup then there are some uh, pre cleaners are also provided so tractors always work in uh, dusty conditions that why pre cleaners are very important in order to prolong the entire engine life uh, pre cleaners are fitted in the upper portion of the main uh, cleaner when the engine is running the air is drawn through the pre cleaner uh, pre cleaner to the tube of the main pre cleaner here large dust particles are removed from the air stream thus uh, reducing the much of the load on the main cleaner so load on the air cleaner uh, main air cleaner is uh, reduced because of the pre cleaners the pre cleaner functions on the centrifugal principle by means of vanes and baffles it gives a rotary motion to the air thus causing the heavier uh, dust particles to throw out due to centrifugal force and pre cleaner air passing to the cleaner the servicing of the air cleaner is an important factor in efficient engine performance so these are the figures of the Uh, pre cleaners uh, you might have been observed in tractor so this is all about air cleaner now